Hey, what's going on? Welcome to Move Fast, Lift Heavy Podcast. This is Joe Roscoe, co-host of MFLH Pod. Thanks for joining in. If you have been following along now for our, I don't know, 13, 14 episodes and you haven't rated or subscribed or left a comment on the episode uh, or the podcast, that'd be greatly appreciated. Would help us spread the word about the podcast. Um, If you're on YouTube, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. We got a lot of things going on with our vlog. Um, following along with Christian Harris and his training, um, what we have going on behind the scenes with the apparel, and uh, all these podcast episodes as well. If you haven't tried out our online training program yet, head over to movefastlifteavy.com. Um, your subscription comes with a free MFLH t-shirt that you can rock. So uh, yeah, try it out, movefastlifteavy.com. You'll also see all of our apparel and our swag there um, on the website. All right. Let's bring on the founder, the uh, co-host of the pod, the man, the myth, the legend, Christian Harris. Yo, what's up? <laughs> what's up, my guy? How, how are we doing today? Doing great. I, uh, you know, we're making this call happen as we do on Thursdays. I'm in the middle of a train with CH session. Just got in my cleaning jerks. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to my Metcon after after we conclude this conversation. You doing the uh, the Friday the Friday work? Today I'm doing I'm doing uh, I have a competition coming up, so I tested one of the workouts on Monday. So I'm actually doing Monday's Metcon today, which is I think the it was like a 400. Me- 400 meter run, 40 cal bike, burpees. I don't know. Do over the know? over the box. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That one. Yep, got uh, it. And then I'm really not looking forward to the second session, which is the 30 second uh, air bike sprint at 75 RPM or above. Listen. Yeah, I wouldn't me. call that a sprint. <laughs> uh, I mean, 70, 75 RPMs. I, I mean. That's kind of like a moderate to hard effort, probably like 80, 85%. For 30 seconds though, for 10 rounds? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, you're Christian 30 Harris. rounds, 30 rounds. Yeah, 30 rounds. You're Christian Harris and I'm Joe Schmo. so. Yeah, so if you're going to do that one, just try to keep that pace a little bit lighter. Maybe hold to like 70 to 75. Like it shouldn't be impossible to do. You know, it should be something you could – What's a uh, 75 RPM on the Watts is like what? Low 400s? No, on the, oh, on the Watts. Um, I think it's a little bit lower than that, honestly. No. Somewhere between really? 350 to 400, I think, yeah. Oh, well, that's 75, maybe, uh, yeah. Maybe I'm just uh, making this worse in my mind than it really will be. I guess I'll let you know after. Yeah, that's actually one metric I don't really pay attention to on the air bike is the Watts. Oh, interesting. When I first started yeah. out, when I first started out, that's all I looked at was my wattage. Was watts? Yeah. Huh. But uh, maybe I'll, maybe I'll do that a couple couple sessions just to see, like, maybe if I can mentally trick myself with the session, um, mm-hmm. pay attention to the watts rather than the RPMs or the cadence if you're using the Echo Bike. Yeah. Usually, if I'm in like a twelve to fifteen minute workout and I'm not sticking to like low fours 400s i know that i'm slacking off Mm. but anyways everyone that's listening maybe you're still interested in what we're talking about but what we are going to be talking about is um the the evolution of the crossfit professional athlete and how they approach a season um we were kind of talking before we started you know the old mantra of a crossfit athlete in let's say 2010 that was a games athlete was, Hey, I'm, I'm going to do five sessions a day uh, for 365 days a year and just grind this thing until the wheels fall off. But now as the sport has evolved, you know, we've started to adapt more of an approach like any normal pro sport where you go through a season and then you have phases that you go through within that season. So uh, I want to have this conversation with Christian to pick his brain about, how he approaches his in season, off season, and everything in between, and then we're going to be getting into some of uh, Christian's nutritional habits and how you can uh, 
be a beast and look like a beast like him um, with uh, that everyday eating. So let's uh, let's jump into the the seasonal conversation as far as how you approach a CrossFit season. So right now the games just concluded in um, what late July, early August. Time is like flying. I can't even really fathom. Yeah, it's that that first week of August. So I guess about five weeks ago now. All right. Uh, we're in the first week of September. So this is perfect. Let's let's talk it in real time. The games are done. What what happens as an elite athlete or what is your approach? Games are done. Now what? What do you do? Yeah, so I think that maybe it depends on the athlete, really. But I would say that first two to six, maybe even eight weeks following the games is kind of just uh, pretty low key, low volume, low intensity. Um, especially if you've competed at the games, you know, your central nervous system is probably fried and shot. So you, you your body really needs to recover coming off of something like that. Um, and again, it depends on the athlete. Also depends on if you were cut early on um, at the games, right? Maybe you, you didn't uh, take such a, a beating over the course of the week. So I think that plays a factor. Also mental fatigue is also a big thing as well. You know, a lot of people can get um, run down and just mentally fried after such a long season and having to stay on for, you know, that eight, eight month period of time. So that first two to six weeks is definitely just a low key reset um before getting back into the swing of things which about now currently most athletes are probably getting back into the swing of their training for most i would say the training usually begins with some sort of testing cycle where you want to address your weaknesses right so that eight month season right you've had a lot of time to to uh be exposed right whether good or bad um on your strengths and weaknesses so typically in the off season what you want to do is address those um so usually you'll do some sort of uh strength progression whether that be an ollie focus or more of a powerlifting type focus or some combination of both uh, you'll do a lot of imbalance work. So maybe more bodybuilding type stuff or single arm, single leg type stuff, uh, core work, um, a lot of prehab, rehab type exercises will be thrown into the program to kind of keep you healthy. And, you know, if you have been banged up, these this would be a good opportunity for you to, you know, rebuild yourself and get get healthy again. So from a strength standpoint, those are type of those are the I guess the the bulk of what you'd be doing. And then as far as conditioning is concerned, your anaerobic system, which is like your zero to five minute time domain, that doesn't really have to get touched too much in the off season. I mean, you can get your touches here and there throughout the week. But most of your time should be spent building the aerobic threshold and your your aerobic system because that takes quite a quite a long time to uh, to build up. Quite quite frankly, yeah. so you're going to spend your time doing a lot of long distance running, uh, a lot of zone two work. You know, if you follow the program, you, you'd see that thrown in there pretty much on a weekly basis, um, and just really tapping into that that uh, aerobic threshold, whether it's on the bike, you're running, or doing some mixed modalities with uh, like a machine medley. So just to recap for people that are listening and trying to follow along to this, what I'm getting from you is that the season's uh, over, the games are, have concluded. You take those two to six weeks to kind of reset, maybe yeah. move the body a bit. And then once you get back into it, it's, all right, what were my weaknesses last year? Was it my squat, you know, can I clean and snatch just fine? But, you know, once I get buried in the hole, you know, I just don't have that leg drive or my handstand push-ups are a huge hole in my game. I'm going to start addressing that. 
I've yeah, I didn't this. actually speak about gymnastics. Gymnastics is another one. Yeah, a lot of strict gymnastics work and stuff like that. Yeah, my uh, my shoulder bothered me all last season. Let me really dial this in and try to address that. Um, then finally, you're saying, hey, you you need to do uh, Fran and Grace and uh, these you know bang your head against the wall for a couple of minutes is not really the prime uh, focus, but it's uh, building the foundation for your aerobic threshold because that's going to take a lot longer to increase than these fast twitch uh, anaerobic things. That is correct. So thanks for uh, letting me do that just in case people, uh, you know, aren't following that might be a little bit new to, to all of this. So this is how long, how long is this for you? Is this a month? Is this two months? What does this phase look like? How long is it? So it's probably about a 12 week process. Um, okay. But within that macro cycle, you're going to have your mini cycles. So your, your meso cycles and your uh, micro cycles. Mm -hmm. So all of those are basic, like uh, your macro cycle is basically like a 12 week or longer span. Uh, your meso cycles are maybe four to six weeks that are within that bigger scheme of things. And then you have your micro cycles, which are basically a you know, what you're doing from a week to week standpoint. Um, you know, you have your, your D loads in there, which would come every three to five weeks or so. Um, you know, in a D load week, you're not completely doing nothing, but you're just kind of pulling off the percentages a little bit, maybe, you know, pulling back some of the overall volume, maybe some of the intensity, if you've been doing any intensity. But for the purposes of where we're at right now, um, it's about 12 weeks, right? So this is like a, a pretty important piece of the puzzle only because this is gonna set your foundation up for the next season. So definitely important to make sure that you're. this is where you're doing the work and a lot of it is gonna be boring, especially this time of year um, because it's not really gonna be the sexy Metcons that you're kind of used to seeing. So it's, it's awful supersets where you're squatting heavy and then Christian's making you do, I don't know, split squats right after squatting heavy. And you're just, <laughs> <hating them>. um, <laughs> uh, so that's going to take us to like, what, maybe November. And then we have about three months until the opens coming. Yep. So again, this, part of the season about November, maybe early December. Um, you know, you're kind of building that foundation. Once we get to December, January, February, that's when things will start to pick up. You'll start to see a lot more intensity within the sessions. Maybe not seeing, you know, so many strength components in the early parts of your session. So for example, right now we're doing, um, Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays are our high volume lifting days. So we're doing snatch work, you know, there's snatch pulls, then we're doing maybe some jerks, some squatting, um, then maybe like a little imbalance work. So that's five strength components followed by some sort of mecom. Once you start getting more into the, uh, the early stages of the, the upcoming season, maybe take away one or two of those pieces. And now we're going to maybe add an additional Metcon in there, um, you know, to start ramping up your anaerobic system for the intensity that you're going to see throughout the open and, you know, the stages to come. Yeah. So it's, <clears throat> you build upon that strength in that first phase, those first three months or so. Then as the open approaches, it's about the engine and then trying to maintain what you built strength wise to complement that engine because so much of the open is, you know, how strong can you be when your heart is in your throat? <laughs> yeah. So, and that's the other thing is like, you're going to see the strength work prescribed in a, a little bit of a different setting, right? So at this point in the season, we don't really need to have that high heart rate while we're lifting. So you can almost rest as needed between your sets, not too long. But as we start getting into, you know, priming for the open and, and those latter parts of the season, you might see more EMOMs and 
uh, maybe even like double unders or biking getting mixed in with your lifting because you want to be able to lift under duress and fatigue. Yeah. Okay. So that's, uh, that's the transition going into the open. You hit the open. I think this is going to be actually, I, I didn't really think about this before we started the conversation, but for me, this might be the most intriguing question is, how do you approach your training in the midst of something like the open that is, well, now it was three weeks long instead of five. So let's just say it's three. They stick with that. How are you trying to continue to progress without hindering your performance on Friday or whenever you do the open workouts? Yeah. I mean, I think for the athlete that, is a quarterfinals or games athlete. The, o- the Open at this point, how they've formatted is it's literally just a formality. It's just something to do uh, for three weeks. So you can easily just continue on with your normal training and just throw the Open workout, you know, maybe start your session with it, yeah. depending on what it is. Um, but you, you definitely would be able to prioritize and um, get your other important pieces of training in that you need to really focus on without hindering your, your program. All right. Let's say I'm, um, you know, just someone at my box and I'm trying to, you know, beat my buddies and I, my aspiration and really only realistic goal is to maybe qualify for the quarterfinal, you know, what what would you say to a person like that that is approaching the open? So in that case, then you're going to definitely put a lot more weight on these open workouts. So in that sense, you might even want to have a little mini deload week before the open just to make sure that your body is feeling fresh and primed for it. Um, and I would definitely suggest doing the open workout on a Thursday, if possible. If not Thursday, then definitely on a Friday morning. This way you can have enough time to recover to hit it once more on a Monday at some point. Definitely want to give yourself two shots to hit it, especially if uh, you know, you're know you really trying to make that push for the quarterfinals. You know, it's so funny you brought that up because when uh, I actually haven't done the Open since 2018, this will be my first Open in a second. But I always did the open workouts twice, but I would not do them until Friday because I, it was, you know, late after the announcement on Thursday night. I wanted to, like, digest what the workout was. But in hindsight, it's like, bro, you're going to do it twice anyways. Just get your touch in on Thursday night as quick as you can. So, like you said, you can re- have more time to recover um, because, yeah, there were times when – that second try would come up and I was just still gassed from that first attempt. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, especially if you're, if you really go at it and depending on what the movements are. So if you have something like, I just remember that overhead squat chest of our workout, like my biceps and forearms and brachialis that like they were so sore for like a week. Like if you have that situation where you do it hard like that the first time, it's just not going to be there the second time, you know? So yeah. you definitely want to make sure you have enough time in between. So us as old football players, it's almost like treat that first one, maybe like a walkthrough, you know, like something. Exactly. Where you, you, you know, going into it, Hey, I'm not doing this to, to actually punch my score. I'm doing this to go 70% and see, Oh, this is how I need to address this workout. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely all sorts of different schools of thought. I, I think it really just depends on your ability. Um, yeah, all simply right. put. All right, yeah. so uh, keep the train moving because we do want to talk nutrition a bit. This is all good yeah, stuff. We could, I could definitely jam. I could jam on this for a while. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I know. I, I, I'm, I'm kind of thinking maybe. Uh, you know, usually everyone listening, we have another guest on with us, but 
maybe uh, if we do another one-on-one -on -one like this, maybe we just hold off on the, uh, excuse me, maybe we hold off on the nutrition um, for another episode because what we're getting into right now, there's a lot of meat on this bone for sure. Um, we'll see. So the open uh, has happened. Quarterfinals is coming up uh, for the elite athlete like yourself. Was it the same picture as the open, meaning training was essentially the same? You're just kind of keeping your head down, hitting the quarterfinal workouts when they come up and, and having your sights set on the semis. Yeah, so quarterfinals is almost like, for the elite athletes, almost like the new open, right? This is kind of like, and it's nice that it's one weekend. Um, but at this point, training is still kind of the same. It's going to be, um, you know, a lot of strength work and EMOMs or mixed stuff in there like that, uh, multiple Metcons per session, and then your additional uh, morning session. Maybe you're starting to throw in some, some heavier weights into the Metcons and some more of those high skilled movements, but it's not going to be too much because from what we, I mean, they could change it, but from what we saw with these quarterfinals workouts, the loading isn't too different. The, the skill level of the movements isn't anything out of the ordinary um, from what we've seen in open workouts with the exception of rope climbs and the GHD sit up, right? We've seen pistols in the open, handstand pushups, double unders. Uh, what else was there? I mean, everything else is pretty, pretty much uh, standard. Um, so following the open, maybe take a couple of days, maybe a week tops. I don't really think, you know, I wouldn't go too crazy with backing off, but then that following week kind of getting right back into a rhythm into the swing of things with your program, coming up into your quarterfinals week, tapering off the early part of the week. So Monday could be a normal session, Tuesday, maybe pull back the intensity a little bit. Wednesday, maybe you're hitting some light lifts, um, you know, getting some percentage work in. Thursday, I mean, Thursday, they're announcing the workouts. So actually Wednesday could be even more of a back off day and kind of be ready to hit it from Thursday through Monday. Yeah. All right. So rewinding, because I'm actually visual. So I'm trying to like put this in my brain. First sure. three months, three first three months after the games, it's hey, recoup and also attack your weaknesses either strength wise or strict gymnastics, things like that. Next three months is okay, now we got and, start and aerobic and your aerobic base. And the aerobic base. All right. Now the next three months is we got to start working on the engine again, getting the heart rate up and lifting and doing the gymnastics that you worked on under fatigue. Correct. Open hits business as usual. You're still in that phase of the engine work with the strength and gymnastics more so like an even spread as opposed to those first three months. And now we've come to the semi. So we're semi-finals now. Now I'm assuming you're going to start talking about like the skill levels of the movement start to enhance. There's going to be other objects like sleds and yada, yada, yada. So how does, how does that all start to play? Yeah, so there's a couple of factors that are going to definitely uh, come into play here. One is going to be what semi are you going to? Because as we've seen over this past year, a lot of the semifinals were very different across the board. So I was at uh, Granite Games this past year, and pretty much all the events were about 10 minutes or so, where you had the West Coast Classic, you had, it was almost a games level program, where you had anything from, you know, that five minutes all the way to, they had the, the ruck run, which was, you know, 45 minutes for for a lot of athletes. Um, so that definitely plays a factor, but if you're somebody that is unsure of where you're gonna be seated, then yeah, you're training for all of that stuff. You're training for odd objects, for sure. You're training for long distance, 
you know, anything longer than 20 minutes or so. Um, a lot of grunt work. And you're definitely going to need to get running within your met cons. Um, yeah, running. Because that's, that's, it's a big, it's a huge part of uh, semifinals and 100% a huge part of the games. I got, I got beef with, I mean, I could totally derail this whole conversation, but my, <laughs> my biggest beef with especially the games is the running. Like, they're the bias in running in the games in comparison to any other single modality, like, uh, rowing, the skiing, the biking, whatever. It seems like every year since I've been watching the games in 2010 or whatever, there's running, I don't know, four or five events, it seems like, in some capacity. Yeah, 100%. Um, I think a lot of that has to do with just because you don't get touches on it in any other parts of the competition. But you don't get um, to interrupt you. But you don't get – I'm very passionate about this topic. <laughs> <laughs> You don't get touches on swimming and you just do one swim event in the very beginning and then you don't touch that. So, okay, you got uh, whoever, Tia or Sam Briggs or, or whoever that's this amazing runner, but then you got this other person that swims like a god, but all it is is running, 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 running. Like what if we turn the tables on you and made you swim in all these events? I think it's more Yeah, I mean it's like, it's definitely an interesting point for sure. Like running to me, I think it's it's the most it's the easiest. Meaning like oh, we want to get their heart rate up and put in some monostructural th we'll just have them run, you know? Like yeah, when I watch the games that's always my biggest beef with the programming is the the bias with the running. You yeah, the I mean you you had the 550-yard run. You had the toes to bar in the running. You had the squat clean in the running twice. You had – was there one more running? Am I missing uh, one more? I feel like there was one more with running That's as it. well. I think that might have been it. As opposed to, you know, you swam once. They skied once with the rope climb. They biked with the power snatch. Uh, I think that was it. Yeah. All right. Anyways, I'm I mean, sorry. I think I, I do think I do think this year though, <laughs> the runs were uh, they were very they were different enough. You know, like there was the longer distance, right? You had the one and a half mile run repeats. Then you had your basically that five. What was it? Five hundred? Five fifty? I mean, that's in pretty much an all out sprint. And then you had your 200. So just your kind of redundant, um, you know, hamster wheel type thing going. Um, I think that's a great but, point. Yeah. But it's still it, – because you could turn the table and say, okay, we're going to do four workouts with handstand push-ups. But one's going to be short and strict. One's going to be mid-range and kipping. One's going to be longer but with parallettes, yada, yada, yada. But at the end of the day, yeah. the person – that is bomb at handstand pushups has an advantage and it's the same yeah, for sure. And that's why also I think you see in the regional days and which are now the semis, you see some of these guys and girls, you know, that crush it or come in first and then you get to the games and you're like, it, it doesn't pan out a lot of the time because of the running. But then you could say, Hey Joe, well, how about, you know, Tia and Matt are all these people that no matter what, they're on top of the podium. So you're wrong. <laughs> there's, <Yeah. laughs> there's, there's that argument as well. No, it's, it's true. Um, but I think if you want to be somebody that succeeds in the sport, you have to be running oh, all year round. <laughs> I got it. I, I, I don't disagree with that. But uh, anyways, I told you I could derail this conversation. <laughs> but uh, to wrap it up, because I know that uh, – you got to get going. We're in our semis and into the games phase. So we've come to the conclusion. What does our last couple of uh, months look like with that semi to games uh, part of the season? Yep. So once you get to in between that stage, you're definitely going to be training 
bare minimum twice a day. Uh, you're probably going to need to throw in, you know, three a days because you're most likely during games, you're doing three workouts per day. You're going to want to start to uh, implement like getting uncomfortable in terms of uh, timing, right? So maybe you'll just put at one o'clock, I'm doing this. At three o'clock, I'm doing this. Five o'clock, I'm doing this. And it's starting right at that time, right? To kind of simulate, you know, those strict uh, start times for each event. Maybe even, I like to do this a little bit earlier, maybe even like during the semifinals. But, you know, say you're doing a workout, it's 225 power cleans, handstand push ups, and skiing. And you're going to start that workout at one o'clock. Uh, practice not doing anything for 10 minutes, right? Because once you get into that mode of, or that part of competition season, before you start an event, you're standing around for about 10 minutes waiting in an athlete corral, not doing anything. You're basically getting cold. Um, so you want to practice that, right? Because if you've never done that before, it can be a whole different ball game when you get out there, um, having yeah. to get out there snatch and be cold. Event. That snatch event was crazy. The guys started at 265 at the games as the first weight, and they might not have touched the bar for 10 or 15 minutes. And then you just got to walk yeah. up a you got to walk up on the platform and snatch 265. Ice cold. <laughs> I, I know sometimes with me in, in my lifting sessions, if I just wait, you know, a minute or two too long, I feel like I'm starting all over again for the first time. 100%. Yeah. I mean, they did do a better job with that at the games. Like they had a little mini, uh, like warm up platform. Oh, okay. But I think. I know at uh, Granite Games, we did not. We were definitely, you know, about 12 to 15 minutes mm. of nothing. Um, same thing at the MAC. I think uh, they did a decent job of having a, a warm up area. So, all that stuff makes a huge difference. Mm. Yeah. I you want to basically, I... you want to practice how you're going to, how it's going to be out there. Yeah. I think the timing of, um, when, when you do your sessions is uh, important. Like you were talking about, uh, I was thinking about you guys at the Granite Games, y'all would be done with the event. And then it seemed like 20 minutes later, you were like yeah. warming up and going right back for the other event. Um, so you gotta be ready for things like that. Yeah, another thing that you can also do when you're planning for a competition is maybe grabbing a buddy to judge you. Um, and whether your reps are good or not, just have them throw in some no reps here and there. Like you're not going to know when it's coming, but just to kind of get familiar with, oh shit, like things aren't going my way. Let me quickly adjust on the fly to, you know, continue moving forward in the workout. Yeah. Um, all right. Let's, let's, um, let's wrap it. Um, everyone listening, you know, uh, there's a lot that goes behind MFLH. Christian's a, a busy dude. We're gonna we're gonna let him go, and uh, we're gonna postpone the the conversation about the nutrition, what Christian eats on a day to day basis from start to finish. I'm really excited to talk about that as well. But um, we just kind of dove into this a lot deeper than I thought. But I thought it was a great conversation, um, and uh, hopefully insightful for everyone that was listening. Um, so here we are, Christian. We're wrapping up. Um, I guess we wrapped up those, uh, mm, I guess it was the first micro cycle, would you say? And now we're into our second um, since the games have been done? Yep. Um, yeah. So we're just starting, basically where we're at now, we're starting our, our big macro cycle and we've just finished up our first micro within the macro. Yeah. Um, and we're about halfway through the mezzo. <laughs> I'm uh I'm plugging in my laptop so it doesn't die. Sorry everyone that's watching right now. Um yeah, so if you haven't followed along with Christian's programming with Move Fast Lift Heavy, um you can go to uh movefastlifthevy.com. You see that scrolling across the bottom here. Get yourself a free MFLH shirt. 
Um, Christian does a great job sending weekly videos. Um, we now started something where he's uh, filming himself doing uh, one of his sessions. Uh, he does them a week before us. So it's going to be really cool to hear him just kind of strategize or, or break down his session and then have us do it that next week and have, um, you know, something to uh, compare and contrast to as we approach our session. So if you haven't hopped on to the program yet, try it out. MoveFastLiftHeavy.com. And uh, yeah, we'd love to have you a part of the crew. Um, it's a great time to hop on board. It's a great time. It's always a great time, but especially now we're, we're really, uh, you know, I've been following it consistently. Mm, I think three, probably three to four months now. And uh, I feel good, man. I feel, I feel ready for this competition. I'm, I'm going to do you proud. I promise. I promise. All right, my man. <laughs> All right, everyone. Uh, appreciate you, Christian. Um, Joseph here. Let's show this for everyone on YouTube. He's wanting an athlete camp. So um, everyone that's uh, listening, you know, we're just getting started here with things at Move Fast Lift Heavy. There's a lot more to come. So if you all are interested in an actual like physical location coming to Long Island at the Move Fast Lift Heavy gym and doing an athlete camp, you know, we're about it. We could definitely make that happen. Um, we're always looking to serve the community and getting to know our, uh, our fam a bit more. So. Yeah, it's definitely think? something I've, I've uh, thought about and, you know, it's something I want to do. So just keep an eye out for it. It's coming soon. Yeah. All right, Christian. Talk to you later. All right. All right. Till next week. Till next week. Later. All right, everyone. That was Christian Harris, founder of Move Fast Lift Heavy, uh, pro CrossFit Games athlete, uh, head of CrossFit, uh, sorry, Move Fast Lift Heavy gear, um, very creative design guy. I'm like, man, how are you so strong and fit? But you also are so creative with all this like Adobe graphics and all this crazy stuff like that. I don't know. Maybe in another life, I'll come back as Christian Harris. You can only dream, right? You can only dream. All right. I'm Joe Roscoe. Don't forget, subscribe, rate, leave a comment. We'd greatly appreciate it. Uh, yeah. Until next time. Have a great day. Later. My name is Christian Harris. I'm a CrossFit athlete, coach, trainer, and founder of Move Fast and Tech. MFLH has always been more than just apparel. It's a way to train, it's a lifestyle to live, and now we've leveled up that mantra by creating our online training platform. Move Fast Lift Heavy now provides personal online programming. The programming can be done either in a gym, with a garage gym set up, or even from the comfort of your own home with a dumbbell or even at body weight. This isn't just your typical workout block. You'll have unlimited access to our coaching staff to ask questions and submit technique videos. MFLH has always been more than just an apparel line. Now you can be a part of the team. Click the link to get started. Let's get to work.